for the upcoming finals games will be determined day to day. The NBA Finals are right here on ESPN Radio. Tune in tonight, Game 3, as the Mavs host the Celtics. Coverage beginning at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on most ESPN radio stations and on Sirius XM Channel 80. Sports Center is brought to you by La Quinta. When you book a room at La Quinta by Wyndham, you can enjoy their free bright side breakfast featuring delicious baked goods, fruit, eggs, yogurt, and waffles. Yeah, you heard that right. Fresh, hot waffles. Tonight, La Quinta. Tomorrow, you shine. Book direct at LQ.com. This is Unsportsmanlike with Chris Canty, Evan Cohen, and Michelle Smallman. Unsportsmanlike. I have zero confidence that Rodgers and the Jets are going to be able to figure this thing out at a championship level. Color me skeptical thinking that they're going to make it to, to the Super Bowl or nonetheless go on a deep playoff run. But I think Aaron Rodgers is going to win the MVP after the 2024 season. I think we're going to see a different version of him, and I think he's going to be great this year. Aaron Rodgers is going to win the MVP award. Off to a great start yesterday. Swimming. I, I just thought Rodgers Rogers showed us why Smalls has him as the MVP. I got Tremen- to, tremendous leader. I got to tell you, normally when they play those returns, I nod along and agree with myself. I'm white knuckling this one, guys. I do not feel great so, about it. So let's set up what happened yesterday. Hold on, before we do that, we yes, got to get to a bottom of a controversy because I must have missed the memo when Jeggings were back in style. Wait, jeggings? Jeggings. Like, like, are, are they back in style? I'm, 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 I'm assuming they are because when I walked in this morning, the first face that I see, usually the first face that anybody sees early on, is Paul Hembakidis, our very own Hembo. Yes. Like, he's our, our stats and information guy, analytics, huge baseball fan. But anyway, I walked in this morning, and Hembo has got a really nice shirt on. Yeah. But then, I, I, you know, you, you say, you're looking at the fit, and you fit check, and it's like, wait a minute. Those are painted on. What, what are we doing here? Why is Hembo's jeans so damn tight? I I'm don't su- understand it. I am surprised you haven't realized that up until this point. I have never seen any kind of bagginess to any of his clothing ever. Well, it oh, doesn't have really? to be baggy, but I just don't understand why it has to be so tight. Let me rephrase. I've never seen any room with any of his clothing ever. ever. So he does it's, not enjoy a relaxed It's like he's no. wearing jean-colored football pants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, that's what he has on. I don't understand what Hembo is doing. It, quite frankly, it's distracting. Like, I, I can't hold a conversation with him because it's like, man, it's, it's glaring how tight his jeans are. Has, have you ever run into that where somebody is wearing something that makes you feel uncomfortable? Oh, yeah. The well, time. That, that's ex- well, that's exactly what Hembo is doing today. But he always does this. He, he I, I, is, feel, I feel like I need to report him to HR. He he wears tighter I'm, I'm clothing. I'm uncomfortable with the workplace environment based on what Hembo is wearing today. So those pants are NSFW? Not safe for work? Not safe for work, no. He not wears safe tighter for work. clothing than anyone I've ever seen. Yeah. It's bad. Really? Like, yeah. like male supermodels wear looser clothing than he does. And I'm not saying he doesn't have a good build, but he thinks he's Brad Pitt. <laughs> I'm mean, just being serious. Like, I, and he thinks he's Michael B. Jordan. I'm just thinking of like the top of the food chain of like fit, in shape, good looking people. Chris it, Hemsworth, it, Thor. Yeah, he thinks he's that. He also, by the way, thinks he should be. He's going to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame one day, and he should be as a contributor. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I would love that. I think he's. Definitely on that path. He could totally. You think do. he's definitely on the path to the Baseball Hall of Fame? Wow. As a contributor. I, okay. W- really? He's on that path as a stat guy for Greeny? Well, he also does a podcast with guys? Buster Only. And Hembo is very, very involved in promoting the game of baseball. So I could totally see his career path going down that road where it becomes more baseball focused. Okay. And he would be great at I, it. I hope you're right. I love Hembo. Uh, but I want everybody to win. And if that's Hembo's dream, right, well, I we know he- that's that's the St. Louis mentality. That's for sure. Yay, everybody's great. Hey, wow, you shut us out, Paul Skeens. Let's root for you as you leave the field last night. We're Congratulations. Rooting, we were not rooting for him. You're kidding, right? It was game respecting game. We are going to get to this, but we got to get to the Rogers stuff here. So just to set this up. So the Jets have mandatory mini camp yesterday. Um, and their head coach, Robert Sala, gets to the podium and announces the following. We've got uh, two inexcused absences. One, obviously, being Hassan. Uh, spoke to him over the weekend. Appreciate the dialogue. He's in a really good place mentally, working his tail off like we all, uh, like we already know. And um, but uh, he's he's choosing to uh, sit out this one inexcused. Uh, the second one is Aaron. Aaron and I spoke uh, before OTA started. He's been uh, very good in communication. He's been here the entire time. It's inexcused, but uh, but a, a, 
uh, he had an event that was very important to him, which he communicated. Both are Enix, not both Enix used. used. Yes. So are they getting fined? Right uh, they're, they're both subject to the CBA fine schedule. Okay, so inexcused both subject to fine because of an event that was previously noted to the Jets. Now that makes you it makes you think that it is more likely than not not a funeral nor a birth or something like that. I'm not going to jump to a conclusion on what the event is. A reminder: Aaron Rodgers on January 8th had this to say about the New York Jets. You want to be a winning organization, then to put yourself in position to win championships and be competitive. Everything that you do matters, and the bullshit that has nothing to do with winning needs to get out of the building so that'll be the focus uh, moving forward okay so that's rogers from january 8th a couple of questions here because i don't know that anyone looks good do they have to have mini camp now if so why can't they actually schedule the offense to show up the day later and and do it different like work around, if you're going to cater to this guy as you've done actually cater to him redo the schedule so he can be there in addition why not address this in advance publicly and let us know in advance, because now it seems like you're letting us know after the fact. Why say it's inexcused so publicly and just make it a no big deal kind of thing? The Jets actually added to this. None of this is an issue if he doesn't say what we just played, the non-football distractions. This happens all the time. But Rodgers made it clear, and he's been there. It takes attention away from the fact that he's actually been there for the voluntary, but doesn't show up for the mandatory. This is so poorly handled by everybody involved. So you're blaming Rob Sala for Aaron Rodgers not showing I'm up for mandatory all of minicamp? Them. I'm blaming all of them. Bill Parcells, your former head coach, famously said to Bill Belichick one day when he was the defensive coordinator for the Giants, and he comes in, and he t Belichick tells Parcells, just to let you know, LT was eight minutes late to the meeting today. I just want to let you know. And Parcells looks at him and says, well, why did you start the meeting before he got there? Because it's, it's Lawrence Taylor. You don't start before he gets there. They've already catered to this guy. Why are they starting before he gets there? And why is he not there? I'm saying there's a million questions to be asked. Well, well, first of all, it's a slippery slope, right? Because if you open that door in building everything that you do as a team in the offseason around Aaron Rodgers' social calendar, then all of a sudden there are going to be some players that feel some type of way in that locker room. And there are other guys that have other interests beyond football that they would like to turn their attention to during this time. And so Aaron Rodgers being in a leadership position because he is the quarterback of the team – is setting an awful tone for the 2024 season. And it's not the end-all, be-all that he's not there for minicamp, right? He wasn't there for minicamp in 2021 season with the Green Bay Packers, went on to win back-to-back -back MVP. So it's not as if it's going to affect his individual performance, but when you're the New York Jets and you're trying to turn the page when it comes to your culture and put this team in position where they could have success this year but also into the future, you need the person that you've empowered in a leadership position to set a better example for everybody in the building. And Aaron Rodgers is falling far short of that. He strikes me as the type of person that, that preaches, do as I say, not as I do. And I don't necessarily know that that type of tone, that type of messaging works with grown men. Especially when you look at the guys on the defensive side of the ball, Quinn and Williams, C.J. Mosley, Quincy Williams, Sauce Gardner, D.J. Reed. Like, so I, I just... It feels like this is an unforced error by Aaron Rodgers, and it puts Rob Sala, their head coach, in an impossible position. When I first heard about this yesterday, the first thing that came to my mind was what we saw during Hard Knocks last year and how the arrival of Aaron Rodgers to the New York Jets was this celebrated move and how so many people in that organization and his teammates were infatuated with him. Mm. They were like, we are seemingly a quarterback away, and you come here. We've got a shot. You've been there, done that. You're going to lead us to where we need to go. Obviously, last year was a disaster because he gets injured four plays into the season. And then it becomes even more of a disaster because of all the things that he is saying off the field. The first thing I thought of yesterday is I wonder if the shine has come off of him with his own team because – Last year, it's easy to get all excited about Aaron Rodgers being there. It's easy to be deferential to him. It's easy to understand why he's getting preferential treatment. After the year that they had, if I'm another member of the New York Jets, I wonder if I still view him the same way or if I'm holding him to that same standard or putting him on that pedestal that I did before. If he's going to come out publicly and say, everything you do matters, and then he's not going to show up because something is more important to him than us getting ready for this upcoming season, 
I might have a problem with that if I'm a player. The other part of it that I now wonder is, does he have a problem with the Jets? They didn't handle it well yesterday. Why, why does he have a, I mean, yes. I him. Mean, I'm yeah. talking about him. Like, think yeah, about it that yeah, way, you know? Yeah, I mean, he can have a problem with how the Jets are framing it, but if it's something so frivolous where they can't make it an excuse absence, then that is of your own doing if you're Aaron Rodgers. That's not Rob Sala's fault because right. eventually whatever he's doing that's taking him away from football right now, away from mandatory minicamp, is going to come out. Whether it's one of the other players that's close to him that leaks it, whether it's somebody that's well, TMZ at, photographs at the in event there. Yeah. that he's at tells about talks about it, it's going to come out. Yes, and agreed. so so why would you want to put Rob Sala in the impossible position if you're Aaron Rodgers to try to defend something that that's seemingly indefensible, something that can't be used as justification for his absence? So so again, I don't think Rob Sala can take up for him by excusing the absence. Uh, by 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 not fighting him according to the CBA, this is clearly Aaron Rodgers prioritizing something above football, and you have to be a little bit skeptical for somebody that only played four plays last year going into his age forty one season. What version of him you're going to get? If football is not the absolute top priority in his life, we're on Sportsman Life presented by Progressive.